Hello everybody, welcome back to this video series. In this video, you'll be learning on how to draw this lovely soft serve ice cream. And all you'll be needing is an A3 paper or an A4 paper. I did mine on A3 paper, which is 250 GSM. Uh, you'll be using two pencils, the 2B pencil and the 4B pencil. I'll be explaining to you on how to be using them in the video. A uh, sharpener, a cup for your sharpenings, uh, your soft putty rubber, and the uh, soft rubber, a normal rubber. So with these items, if I put them to the side, you will be creating this lovely little ice cream cone. It is perfect for summer, and I think it's so cute. And let's jump right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, putty rubber and I'm going to start tapping on my sketch outline to remove all the excess uh, pigment which I don't want to be seen during my drawing. Basically I'm removing the pigment because whenever you have a subject matter in nature you will never see a harsh outline on anything in nature. So that's why I like to remove it just to give it a more of a realistic 3D look. And next after I finish my uh, tapping, I'm going to go ahead and use a 2B to start off my drawing. And I'm going to try and go and draw my drawing going from up to down and left to right. This will decrease any chance of smudging since I am right-handed. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the darkest value. I find that when I start drawing the darkest value of any um, picture, I kind of set the tone and set the contrast ready for me to know which is the darkest value, the mid-tone and the lightest tone. So I'm constantly looking at the reference picture and I know and I notice while I'm looking at it that the lighting is coming from the top part of the ice cream cone. So I know that the bottom part will always have shadows. Now this is a type of drawing where we have a lot of play on tones. And this play on tones will be tricky to create, but no, no worries, I will take you through it step by step and we'll do it together. So I'm going to go ahead and I am marking the dark tone. If you notice, I'm starting with a very light kind of dark tone. It looks more like a mid-tone to me right now. And um, this is because I prefer to go light first and then darken later on. Reason being, it's better to go light and darken rather than go dark and trying to lighten it up with a putty rubber because you can go light with a putty rubber, but it's very hard to achieve a very light shade after you went too dark because obviously the pigment would have already stained the paper and it would be almost impossible to remove a super dark pigment. So that's the reason why I like to use a 2B pencil for the beginning, just to see how dark I need to go. And most of the time I end up just using the 2B. I just use lots of pressure and I tend to just... Um, create lots of different shades and tones with it but at least I start with something light and um, easily rubbed off as a 2B rather than just starting with an 8B and then it would be a nightmare to start rubbing off if I make a mistake and guys mistakes do happen so um, if you see that maybe your picture is too dark or maybe you went out of, out of the line that's why the eraser was invented so don't worry you can just go ahead rub it off try again and and come back to this video so right now i am drawing the tip of my ice cream and i'm setting the values i have a mid-tone here next to the dark tone also i am using the greta color fine art graphite pencil and honestly guys you can use any type of pencil that you like you don't need to have any particular brand for this um, drawing and any other drawing that i will be creating in the future so any brand is fine as long as it is a 2B and or a 4B pencil. Right now I'm using the 2B as I mentioned 
and I am trying to really set that curve and that curve is the tip it is um kind of melting right now so I really want to show that um drip form so I'm shading it I'm creating a lighter tone onto the left hand side really trying to make that tip a bit fatter to show as though the ice cream is starting to melt I'm creating a little shadow at the bottom so that I have that kind of sphere looking tip so I am creating more shadow at the bottom and you will notice that I tend to go back and forth um, on something that I have already drawn literally a few seconds before just because as soon as I draw a form as soon as I draw an area I immediately know and realize if I made a mistake so I kind of correct it immediately I set a tone immediately if I see that there is an area which needs to be darker I darken it and I try to focus by finalizing an area and moving on to the next however if you talk to any um, artist they will always tell you that that's kind of impossible an artist will always go back to what they arranged um but that's fine so i try to finish a section make sure it looks good and go on, on to the next so i really am trying to keep the top part light so that i can show very clearly that the light is coming from the top And if you notice, the ice cream has a lot of folds. So whenever you have a sharp line jutting out, you it will always be followed by a shadow. That will create um, a kind of contrast and a more of a realistic look to your drawing. So I decided to focus on one, um, let's call it pot. So it's this dark pot over here. Um, when you have a drawing like this, it, you get easily confused if you start jumping from one to the other. However, you can do it in, in my opinion, you can either approach it in two ways. And I tried to amalgamate the two of them, either stick to one let's call it a pot okay like a, a column you can either stick to one column and just draw all that or stick to one section now ideally you stick to the section because if you stick to one whole line and um, you realize that as you go along the line the tones is going to change according to the section that you are drawing on so ideally just stick to the section so you can visualize the area well and I, you won't get confused. So I decided to continue and go on that dark shade of color and as you notice, I'm just starting off light again. Just giving it one basic tone, nothing much, darkening slowly, adding layers. I'm continuously darkening the bottom. And I start blending as I go upwards, very slowly, small lines. Next, I'm just going to fill up the rest of the space so that I can be able to visualize it as one whole thing. 
Now we notice I have that slanting uh, line at the top on my dark, um, on my darkest column. That slanting line is basically the shadow created by that um, curve with the circular sphere at the bottom. So I'm gonna try then to smoothen it out as I'm smoothening the bottom parts right now. So I'm creating layers, I'm darkening, slowly, slowly getting darker until I reach the desired tone. Again, I'm blending it a bit further. So when you have something like this, which is, well, it's kind of like a fat line, right? Any slight change of tone is going to make such a difference. So the fact that the bottom is dark comes to a light there's a sudden shadow and then you know it just continues getting darker because the curve will automatically set the viewer's attention that that part of the ice cream is curved so it's really important to give lots of detail on these little things So I decided to go back and continue doing the dark shade here, setting the darkest zone as I mentioned is probably the most fundamental. I find that now that I have two sections with the darkest shade will help me to find what the mid-tone will be because I've already set what my light tone is on the top part of my soft serve and once I have both the um, darkest tone and light tone set I can automatically then fill in with the mid tone easily. Same thing as I mentioned before I am working with layers And I decided to put a paper there just because I noticed that I was smudging a little bit with my hand. So then again, I am now tackling the mid tone. And I went in with a very, very super light shade. And I realized that those pencil markings came out too harsh, so I'm rubbing them off. It's okay, just rub it off, do it again. It's better to rub it off now than realizing that it looks bad later because that would be a, a headache to rub off. So once again, I'm going to shade that mid-tone like this, even if it's just a shade, it already looks gathered. Now I'm going to create that shadow coming from the bottom to match the column on the left. I'm going to continue and darken my third column. So I can really match that mid-tone later on. Now I'm going to go ahead with the 4B. Um, I'm going to use the 4B because 
it's gonna make my dark tone darker and of course since the 4b is much a uh, softer pencil than the 2b and it's much darker than the 2b it's going to really enhance that super dark area in my ice cream serve I'm really applying pressure there. I'm going back with my 2B. I'm gonna enhance that shadow even further with my 2B. I don't want it to be too dark now, I'm just starting off lighter. It's all about enhancement. Trying to get it right. Slowly, slowly. I'm going to make my way up. And it's gonna get lighter and lighter because as you notice, as that column starts to curve, it starts to curve into the light. So it's gonna go from a dark shadow to a super light shade. Now, when you have an ice cream cone, um, the corners of the cream are always soft. So I don't wanna leave that harsh, line showing it doesn't look right so i always try to blend my lines make them look a bit softer So as you can see, I'm starting my fourth column now. Now, since that um, corner was dark on the top left-hand side, now as it goes down, it's coming into the light and it's getting lighter. So it's more of a mid-tone type of color. And that is really going to set the um, base for me I'm gonna try and go again over the outline of the fifth column because since I went over it now the line almost completely disappeared And since the line was fresh in my head, I decided to just go over it very quickly. And here on the fourth column, I'm going back again with the shadowing part. I'm darkening the right hand side of my ice cream. Slowly, slowly adding more of a darker tone. Now, as I mentioned before, since this cone, um, the lighting is coming from the top of the cone and the bottom part needs to be darker. This will show that there is that curve um, in my ice cream and that there's... It looks almost as though there is some kind of sphere. I'm 
I'm going to keep on adding more dark values at the bottom till I decide that it looks good to go. So I think I just leave it like that for now and go on to the next column. Now that next column is going to be super dark. In fact, I decided to just go ahead, do the outline, fill it in. I'm still using my 2B pencil. And as I progress upwards, it's going to get lighter because obviously it's going back to the light source. So I sharpen my pencil a bit more. I don't need that anymore. Okay, so I got my tools next to me. And I'm going to go ahead and continue shading the last column on the right. It's always a good idea to hold the paper when you <laughs> obviously rub off. Um, I like to use to leave my paper loose just because I tend to move it slightly here and there. Um, I believe that it's easier on my hand if I could move the paper because if I know it's stuck, then if I need to just move it a little bit or see it from a different angle, I know that I have that restriction. So I just, I just prefer to keep it a bit loose. It might move a little bit, but I prefer it. I think it's easier on me. So I am continuing creating that shadow coming from the previous um, line. And as it progresses downwards, getting lighter and lighter. I'm enhancing the um, corner of the soft serve with a pointy um, darker line. And here, you notice I'm using the tip of my pencil rather than the side of my pencil. I'm doing this so that I can easily um, go over the tiny details which I think need to be arranged. I'm continuously adding this dark shade using the tip so I can really create a smooth line. next to the other column. This side is particularly super dark, so I'm really pressing my 2B pencil. It is exactly away from the light. That will definitely set the darkest tone of the drawing. So I'm going to join the rest of the ice cream with one whole shade and then I'm going to go in and darkening the rest of my column. Now here I'm grabbing my 4B pencil and I'm really, really enhancing the whole line creating as much depth as I possibly can all around the line, adding all the darker values, which I think is required to do so. And with that 4B, I am really going in with the tip, adding all the shadows that need to be added. And with my putty wrapper, I'm going to go ahead and create a more um, glossy look since my ice cream is obviously a cream, so it has some gloss in it. And I'm trying to enhance that dark to light, 
but however if i have my light tones with my putty rubber i'm going ahead and just adding that darker tone next to it that will create more of a um, glossy effect now with my putty rubber i'm creating those tiny dots just to show that my ice cream it has a texture now that second column i literally just left it there so i'm gonna go ahead and just create the shadow because since that column is the lightest column of that top part of my soft serve I tend to leave it last so I can really know where that mid-tone value will be and how light or how dark I should go. Again, I'm going in with the putty rubber, rubbing off all the excess pigment which I don't want to be seen. Gently adding a bit more darker tones. Now, if you know, as you notice, I've almost finished the top part of my soft serve. Now, since it's almost ready, I would like to finalize it. So I don't need to go back to it later. And I just keep on focusing on the next layer and the next layer. So I really am trying to perfect it. I'm using my putty rubber to really enhance my picture, I created some tiny dots on that um, light column to create a bit of texture with the putty rubber. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some more tiny dots. They barely show, but it makes a whole difference when you see it um, as a whole. I'm darkening the top a bit more to create more of a shadow. I'm still using the 4B. I'm adding more light to the top section on the third column. Correcting again. So now I'm going to go ahead and continue the drawing. I'm going to add a tone on the far left hand side. I'm arranging it, adding darker tones slowly. So I started with a basic tone, adding the darker values. As I progress, I'm looking at the reference photo in the meantime and applying it to my drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rub off a bit more the top part, look more a bit more realistic.
So I'm ready from the top part. I'm going to go ahead and start the second tier. And I just decided to pick um, a random column, which I thought would set my tone perfectly. So I just went and created one shade. I'm going to go ahead and create another shade on the next one. I realized I made a small mistake in my sketch there. So a quick fix with a putty rubber is all you need. And I'm just right now setting a basic tone to all my dark shades. So I have this first column there. And I'm gonna focus on that now. So I'm just slowly adding the darker tones. And I'm really focusing on the outer line because with the um, softness of the ice cream, the outer line is creating kind of like a curve on that column so it's kind of dipping down and if it's dipping down it's going away from the uh, light source of course so it's creating a shadow now that second column is much darker than my other two, so I am shading it with darkest pencil marking. However, not too dark, okay? Remember, always go light, then go dark again, but it's much darker than the other mid-tone which I've, which I've um, drawn. The top line next to the third column is darker because it's creating a shadow onto the second column. Here I'm really looking at the reference, seeing how the tones vary. If you notice, I'm still using the 4B here. Um, I decided to leave the 2B where it is just because since the second tier is much further down than the first tier, it's obviously going to get darker because it doesn't have as much highlight um, as the second tier. So I'm going to pinch my putty rubber and rub off some highlight. And I'm going to create that soft curve of the outline of my soft serve. And I just do that by pinching the putty rubber with two fingers, as you see. And that gives me the possibility to create a straight line. Obviously, the putty rubber is um, very soft. So it's always recommended to go back and arrange it with your pencil to define it a bit more. So now I'm cleaning up the eraser mark and I have the possibility now to really arrange these three columns together because they are in harmony, they kind of already have a tone set, I just need to arrange their shade.
So since I had that shadow on the top part, it's creating another shadow on my um, third column. I'm going over the eraser mark again because some areas I thought it was too light. Adding more shadow. Now, the second column, I realized that they're almost the same shade, so I had to go in and darken it a bit more. You see, one thing affects the other, and it's important to really keep your eyes open, not just on one column, but everything goes with each other so you have to really make sure that if you arrange one side you check the other side because if you made one side darker than it should be then you either have to correct it or make the other side match to make it look credible so the first column has this dark to light going in the upwards direction really trying to curve the outline and trying to add more um, defined lines I'm setting the butt rubber to the form which I desire and I am tapping a bit more on the first column to remove the excess pigment which I think is extra and just by doing so I'm already creating a highlight on my ice cream and also a texture so I'm just tapping and I'm really trying to get it highlighting, creating a contrast.
continuously correcting myself. So now if you notice I'm really really going and pressing hard and adding the darkest values to my drawing. I'm going to continue that, um, let's call it the third column, setting the value and darkening it slowly, slowly. Now with the outline, I already am creating a form. I'm trying to make that line pop a bit more by creating that shadow. So now I'm just creating the shadow for that light line on the right, blending it out. And once again, I have the shadow on the bottom of my ice cream so again I'm darkening the area okay so on this third column we have what we have a dark to light to dark again so we have the kind of curve looking um, picture Blending it out. Always making it darker, applying more pressure. Now I am really pressing hard to create that dark tone. That is an area where the cream kind of left a little space between one tier and the other. So that extra space created a super dark um, value. And I'm blending it together with the third column to make it look more credible. So continuing with the darkest side of the top tier, I'm going to set the darkest shade on the second tier, rubbing off any excess lines which won't, I don't want to interfere with my um, second tier. So 
So that third column was quite light and it's facing the um, lighting directly. And I'm just adding the details so I can finish that area off. Creating a shadow next to the lighting, um, next to the light corner to make, to make it more rounded. And as I move on onto the next section, I'm gonna go and just create one shade so that I can start visualizing its form. So now I have a visual on the dark tones, the light tones, the mid tones, and I know where I need to darken and where I need to lighten to make it look more credible. So over there, as it touches the um, shadow of the top tier, um, it creates a shadow on the second tier automatically. So that's why I'm making it a bit darker. So with my putty rubber, I am again creating the highlights of the line and also blending the areas where the highlight pops a bit more. I'm lifting off the pigment by tapping on the paper. And once again, I am blending it out to correct the excess lighting. So I'm really creating that shade.
I am darkening the third tier a bit more and now I'm gonna go ahead and start the um, last column of the second tier I'm going over the outline first so I can clearly visualize where I want my dark values to be. And I'm giving it one whole shade. Again, with this shade, I can already have a feel of the whole drawing as something one. And I am already setting my dark values creating the shade from dark to light dark on the bottom right hand corner going on to the lighter side and the top So I'm adding a bit more of a darker shade as I progress. This is basically all a repetition. I'm basically doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but that's why it's so beautiful because repetition is key and it creates this harmony to the eye and it captures one's attention immediately. I'm going to wrap off that little area to create more of a soft looking texture. Adding more dark tones. Okay, so my second tier is done. I'm gonna go on to the third tier. And I decided to just do the tiny section first. And I am realizing that that section is a bit dark, so I'm setting my dark tone, blending it, setting a tone, so that then I can just add my darker values later on.
I am constructing the line, which I think should be dark. And I'm going ahead applying as much pressure as I can to create a dark to light look. Adding the darker value at the bottom and I'm applying more pressure on the corner like this I'm adding this dark tone at the bottom Blending it with the rest of the picture. This is the only challenge when you have these type of drawings, lots of lights and highlights and low lights. They tend to play with the eye and you have to really go back and forth until you are satisfied with your picture. So now I'm going to go ahead and really shade around that soft cream. Creating darker tones with every shade. Constantly applying more pressure 
Now it looks more realistic and I'm happy with it. And I'm going to continue and do the next column. Adding a super dark tone on the side. So with my butter rubber, um, again, I am cleansing the highlight area. I am literally just um, pinching my finger to create the right size that I wanted to. So I am tapping on the highlight. Now I'm not doing a swift motion, just tapping so I can remove all the excess pigment, which I would like to remove. And according to my reference, I have a dark to light. So that's why I made a dark line. So I can set that dark shadow at the bottom. And slowly, slowly, I am getting darker. So again, I'm pressing with my 4B and all the dark values, creating lots of shadows. And this contrast between dark and light really creates this 3D effect on my drawing.
continuing to do that dark to light effect and creating some texture with my putty rubber by creating um, a series of dots next to each other especially with my um, index finger and thumb I create like a little um, round edge on my putty rubber and it does the job I'm always blending. I'm going to wrap off a bit the edge because it came a bit too dark. And then again, I'm going to fix it with my pencil. I'm going to enhance the texture a bit more by adding the dark tones I'm also going to go ahead and shade the next uh, bump on the cream I'm enhancing the shadows by pressing a bit more
So then again, I'm going to go with my pencil and just go over all the left hand side of my drawing. So that I am super happy with it. And I won't need to visit it again. I added that light line on the left hand side of that column. Again, it kind of makes the corner shine a bit more and it gives it more of that realistic appeal. Now I am going to emphasize on the next column and I'm going to create that shadow affected by that little soft serve cream. I'm going to go ahead and darken the line. Recreating the line again. And I am going to go ahead and shade. As you can see, again, I'm holding the pencil from the, um, very far away from the tip. I want my um, very, very soft pressure. I am adding it to the picture and always adding a bit more pressure each time to make a dark to light effect. Again, just to create a form, I am going to go ahead and just fill up the next column so I can compare and contrast with the other two tiers. So slowly, slowly, I am adding more pigment, pressing a bit more. My fingers are now closer to the tip than they were before.
I'm adding my layers, darkening my picture. Now, if you notice the two lines I'm working on right now, the top line is supposed to be darker than the bottom line because the lighting that is shining on top of that line is more um hidden so we have that's why we have one line is darker than the other however since there is a kind of corner we are creating of course a shadow on top of each other then i've created another shadow on the top side of the last tier and i'm really working around the small corners i'm creating that little shadow there for the last tier and then again i'm going in with that shadow really making sure that i don't leave any white that's very important also i left a white line for now to show that there is the um corner of the cream and then if you notice i went in and made a dark line there just to enhance the uh, top of the cream a bit further and also i am enhancing it more with more darker tones When creating a shadow from a shadow, you have to keep in mind that if there is a shadow, you have to keep your values in check because not all the shadows will compensate each other. So you don't want it to look weird or you don't want to look fake. So you have to really make sure that the ratio um, on tones will make sense. I also darkened a bit that light hue and then I will just go on and enhance it with the butter rubber. However, it already seems to be doing well. So if you notice, I am always going and correcting what I've done already with the butter rubber. The reason being for this is 
that the putty rubber is quite fat actually and whenever you, if you don't really pinch your um, rubber in the right manner it might rub off obviously a bit more than you might have expected so it's always wise just to go back arrange it so until you are happy with your look so you will always go back with your pencil after you use a putty rubber most of the time so that you can achieve a more of a wholesome look So now I am enhancing the shadow at the bottom, making sure that the shadows on the bot on the last tier are all visible. And as you can see, I'm really, really pressing hard, keeping holding my pencil very close to the tip of the pencil and applying pressure. Okay, so now we are ready from our cream and we're going to go ahead and create the tone for the base. And on the cone, I want to keep it very light because it is obviously a very light brown cone and I don't darken it too much. We had a lot, already quite a lot of um, shading on the top, so I'd rather keep the focus on top I am here trying to create a design it has a little flower on the side and it doesn't really show obviously because it is right on the side but I'm still trying to enhance it trying to um, show it off because it's quite a sweet touch now that little putty rubber touch made it look more embossed we're gonna understand that even further i do the other flower in the middle so with just a few swipes i'm gonna create a shade from dark to light for this next section with the flower and with just a smooth movement i'm gonna go over my flower And also, I'm going to enhance the top part. That is where the ice cream sets. So that's why I did that little shadow there. I didn't want to lose the line. Um, I'm creating the shadows beneath the flower. That is another trick you can use. Sometimes when you do a whole shade and you have a very, very faint outline for your drawing sometimes you kind of lose it because the faint outline together with the um, one tone background they kind of have the same type of um, color so if you feel that you're going to lose that outline go ahead darken it and then you can always lighten it later with a butter rubber in this case um, it, it was meant to be quite dark because that is an embossed flower on the cone itself so i decided just to go ahead and darken it anyway if you notice i'm creating a very dark line next to the flower next to the petal and then i am just shading it with one tone between the petals so a dark line beneath the petal And then I just fill in the blank with a shade. So next I'm just going to enhance that section further. Of course, um, there's still some darker tones, more darker tones than I might want. Let's see how this is going to look so that I can visualize what to rub off. Um, so making it a bit darker, 
this type of cone has um it's kind of bumpy on the sides so that's why i have that dark tone there i'm creating a shadow really blending it well with my flower And then I'm just going in and filling in the rest of the ice cream cone with a very light color. I'm filling in the bottom because obviously now that is where my drawing would stop and I wouldn't want to just leave it with you know, the pencil markings showing. So I'm kind of making it neat by doing a straightish line. I'm enhancing the shadows a bit more. If you notice, I'm paying a lot of attention to where the light is shining because um, the light is shining from the top, slightly coming from the left side. So the flower definitely has to have a lot of shadow coming from that top left hand side corner. Enhancing more shadow on the right, blending. And obviously then I am perfecting the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and create more shadow. Keep in mind that you have the shadow from the cream resting onto your own cone, and that's gonna make a lot of difference. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the last section of our drawing, which is the third part of the cone itself. And I, I'm going to start off with the darker tones so that when I go ahead and create the one tone section, um, the one shade, I can very much easily um, recognize where I had those lines. Those lines are also embossed. They are part of the design of the cone. Um, and those three lines are usually there just to enhance the grip. So that's why I'm really going ahead, making them dark and embossed just like the flower on the previous section so that um, it looks cohesive and part of the design of the same cone. Now, I really want to keep in mind that this cone is a completely different object than the cream itself. So I don't want to use too much dark um, coloring in it and I'm um, keeping in mind that the texture will be different. So th the way I'm pressing it is also a bit different than the ice cream cone. The ice cream cone had more um, darker and sharp darks and sharp lights next to each other, whilst this um, cone has more of a kind of one tone feel with just the added shadows. So I'm not using the putty rubber as much, only where I need it to. And in fact, I just use a putty rubber to just clean up, if you noticed. So here I go, I am literally just doing one whole shade over everything. And then I will enhance this fit um, later on. So it's very important to keep an eye on textures. So here we were dealing with two types of textures. We're dealing with cream 
and a matte cone. So the cream has that very light highlights and very dark low lights with the shadows. So you have this play on the eye, on the visual, with this contrast uh, and dark tones and light tones next to each other. And this will also um, give the viewer this kind of visual taste that the ice cream cone is actually a very soft and creamy texture while the cone itself is matte and it doesn't have so much shine into it just because it doesn't it's a matte object and if you notice i'm really going a bit darker now i'm trying to enhance that curve a bit further and i just go ahead i did one shade everywhere and i'm just then going with the butter wrapper just to clean up where I need to. I'm not really focusing on adding any um, highlights on the cone itself. And here, as you can see, I'm adding more shadow that be is being caused from the cream itself, the middle piece of cream on the bottom tier, and it's causing a shadow onto the right hand side of my uh, cone. And you notice, obviously, this is I'm doing this just because the lighting is coming from the top left hand corner. So you always have to make sure that any shadow that might be cast onto your next object is properly done well. This is what is going to make the um, drawing look just even more realistic than it should. And I'm going ahead, I'm really darkening those lines to make them pop even more. And when you add a dark line next to a, a lighter line, as we have learned today, um, it really enhances your picture more. It just looks as though your little line is just popping out of your picture. And I'm adding that fourth line over there, just because I thought it won't show, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, because it would look fake if I don't. And now I'm cleaning up the picture. I have a line on my reference, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that as well. Also, the side of my cone is a bit bumpy because there is another embossed picture on the side, even though it's not very visible. I still did it just to continue with my photo reference and make it look um, more appealing. Also, I'm adding that little dark line um, again copying it from the photo reference and I'm going ahead and really really enhancing the final look now I just want everything to be cohesive I am finalizing it I am looking at the whole texture together with the whole cone trying to join the sections together I am going in and really darkening those lines a bit more adding shadows adding Enhancing the highlights as well with the pencil only. And basically all I'm trying to do now is create this cohesive uh, picture of a cone so that I just, you know, continue and arrange it, adding the mid-tones better, adding more low lights, adding more highlights. And um, if you notice, I really minimally used the putty rubber. And instead, I just went ahead and arranged the lowlights and highlights with my pencil. So here, coming to the end of the drawing, it was more of a repetition, but that's how you achieve this look, by the repetitive waves of this um, soft serve ice cream. I hope you enjoyed drawing this picture with me. I'm just cleaning up the last sections of the drawing now and... All I need to do is just really, really, really keep on adding some shadows. So I'm going ahead and just adding more shadows, adding more defined lines. And I'm really paying attention to the shadow part of the lines, always going over them and making sure that all the shadows are in, in with, within the same ratio as the cream itself so keep that in mind always look back on your work to make sure that what you're doing now 
is just as cohesive with the whole drawing together. So, you know, always focus and make sure that each shadow represents the same tone as the cream, for example, so that you make sure that obviously if the cream has to be a bit darker, then you know that your comb will be a slightly lighter tone. And just cleaning it up with my pencil, making sure I have no sudden bumps anywhere, making sure that whenever I shade, I have a smooth surface. Obviously, cones are very smooth. So I really want to achieve that dark to light feature on the cone while keeping it simple. I don't want to add too much texture to it. We all know that the wafer of the cone is very smooth. And now I'm just going ahead, just cleaning up. I, if you notice, um, there's a diagonal shadow coming from the flower. So on the flower section, that is obviously stemming from the shadow of the cream itself on top. So where the highlight is on that wafer, I'm going ahead and really enhancing that petal a bit more, just to make it pop a bit more because since the right hand side is already dark and shaded i want to add a bit more of a darker shadow underneath that petal just to make it look a bit more embossed so the petals on the dark side are a bit darker of course because they're within the shadow range Here I'm really focusing on enhancing the last final touches of my um, wafer cone and I'm making sure everything is smooth, everything is cohesive, I'm looking at the picture as well and finally I am happy with the drawing, I'm looking at it from top to bottom making sure that everything is um, looking good and there you go, we have a finished ice cream cone. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please, I would love to see your drawings. Post them in the comment section below. And even if you have any questions or queries on how to further enhance your drawing, you can contact me um, either through my email or Patreon itself. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.